In Terminator 2, Judgment Day, Skynet is up to its old tricks, uh, once again sending a terrifying machine, uh, this time to kill John Connor when he's a child, uh, but also the resistance of the human race is able to send a protector once again. Uh, this time Arnold is back as a Terminator, but uh, designed to save John Connor, to protect him. Uh, Terminator 2. This is a movie that's uh, 25 years old. To this day, it remains one of the best and most impressive action movies ever made. And arguably, it's, it's one of the best sequels ever made, too. And kind of the interesting thing about it is that it is sort of almost like a remake of the first movie. It takes a very, you know, the same concept, uh, uh, protector and uh, killer sent back uh, from the future uh, to, to kill uh, the, the future leader of, of the human race and the post-apocalyptic uh, wasteland uh, where uh, machines and humans are in uh, struggle, in battle uh, together. And it, it just kind of moves the pieces a little bit more, um, uh, progressing the characters a, a little bit uh, further. And... You know, I think it must have been sort of a temptation from James Cameron to take that concept, uh, which he, he gave to us in the first movie, and pursue it in a way that where he's developed so much further as a filmmaker and has bigger budgets and, and more uh, confidence from his audience uh, to present this idea. Like with, with the first Terminator, again, it was kind of a, a, a lower budget movie, and you can definitely sense the low budget in it. Um, but after The Terminator, he did Aliens, which is a much huger budget movie, and The Abyss, uh, also a huge budget movie, uh, pushing special effects technology to its pinnacle. Um, here we have Terminator 2, where he's kind of revisiting uh, the concept that kind of put him on the map. And I, I think, you know, in a lot of ways, this does top the first movie, but it complements it very well. Um, of course, kind of the... Uh, another aspect to it is is Arnold himself, who uh, between uh, the first movie and this one became like the hugest action star you could ever imagine. Um, so definitely you got to make him the hero in this movie, which is exactly what they do. Um, so I think that's an interesting aspect uh, to it, creating the same uh, type of machine, but reprogrammed to uh, protect instead of to kill. So I think that's an interesting concept. And what this movie plays with a lot of, uh, in a lot of ways is uh, kind of, you know, can can a machine really learn to uh, understand humans uh, in an emotional way? And can he uh, uh, connect to John Connor in kind of a surrogate father kind of way? Which is what this movie explores in, in a really uh, kind of touching way. Uh, so I think there are no kind of uh, shortcuts that this movie takes. Like there, it's it's a pretty damn long movie, um, but this is an action epic. So I think it has its cake and eats its too in, in terms of one creating these incredible action scenes that just about top, you know, the first movie in every way, more elaborate, more special effects based, um, but also integrating uh, the scenes of uh, bonding between the Terminator and uh, young John Connor, uh, played by Edward Furlong. Um, also, Linda Hamilton is back. Uh, there's a lot that's happened to her since the first movie. Uh, she has kind of played into you know, the ideal that uh, her son is, is the leader of the human race uh, in the future, and she has to do everything that she can to uh, mold him that way. Uh, but what her kind of M.O. is uh, s between the movies is that sh she wants to stop Judgment Day. And we learn that, you know, she's uh, been trying to blow up uh, uh, computer buildings and kind of stop whatever trail she can that leads to the, the nuclear war. You know, tortured by it, uh, having nine Nightmares of it, a nightmare uh, uh, that we do see uh, that in in this movie in a very terrifying kind of way. Um, so the Sarah Connor that we saw in the first movie is completely gone. The new one here, Linda Hamilton, has, has made such an incredible transformation uh, to this really gruff and, and tortured and uh, very... Uh, strong military kind of uh, mindset to her uh that's that's just so jarring like you, you look at her in the first movie and you look at her in this it's, it's night and day um and of course she's uh, stuck in a mental asylum and it's up to uh, john connor and the terminator to, to save her once uh, once the plot gets rolling um so those are the returning characters, but we have a new uh, Terminator, the T-1000, which is, uh, as, as we learn, an advanced prototype. 
uh, played by Robert Patrick in a really awesome role. Um, th- this is definitely a, a, a character designed to showcase special effects that were being innovated at the time. So much much like the the machine itself is a prototype, the effects that we see in, in the movie are proto- prototypical as well. Um, you know, integrating CGI uh, with previous uh, 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 James Cameron film, we had The Abyss, which did the really cool, you know, water effect uh, through through the aliens. Here, this is a liquid metal Terminator, so it can kind of morph and, uh, like a chameleon, uh, it, it can imitate uh, people that it makes contact with. Uh, also, uh, creating uh, knives and stabbing weapons uh, from, from its... Uh, uh, in her, in her making, so there's a lot of scenes where his his, arm, his his hand turns into like a big piercing sword, which is really cool. Um, and so he's pursuing John Connor, and you know it's it's kind of the the same story in in a certain sense that uh, we have this determined, unstoppable killing machine uh, trying to you know uh, uh, terminate uh, the the leader of the human race, John Connor, now a kid, um, and. That works great, just in in that simple concept alone. Taking the the concept from the first movie and and making it bigger, better. Um, but what what this movie is uh, progressing towards is okay. So the the first Terminator, it kind of ended uh, in a way that was very satisfying. Like we had the concept of. Uh, the future war, John Connor is the leader, uh, the Terminator's trying to kill uh, the the mother before he's even born and kind of help the machines win their war in the future, but the Terminator is stopped and, and that's that. That's a satisfying ending, but it still kind of leaves hanging, hey, there's a fucking nuclear war coming soon, so maybe they should stop it. Uh, and that's kind of what this movie is about, stopping the, the nuclear war um, and, and their, their kind of journey towards that. And it does kind of get a little bit uh, preachy and, you know, when will mankind learn, you know, things like that. Uh, but I think it does it in a fair way, and I think it does it in a way that uh, anchors uh, the characters. Because the first movie, it was a love story. This is a love story, too. But what James Cameron has said of his movies, uh, all my movies are love stories, uh, but some of them are about paternal love. Uh, so we have John Connor uh, with uh, both his his mother, who, you know, uh, he's very uh, put off by her originally because uh, she's in a mental asylum. He thought, you know, everything that she was telling him was complete bullshit. He's disillusioned. Uh, but then once uh, the T-1000 strikes, it's it's all a matter of she was right all along. She, you know, had my best interests at, at hand. So there is this love story between uh, a mother and son, which is very moving. And there is the uh, paternal love story between uh, him and the Terminator, where, you know, he's, he's growing up without a real father, never met his real father. Um, which he would in the future because of paradoxes, whatever. Um, but he, he's kind of uh, becoming very attached to the Terminator and trying to teach him things about, uh, you know, how to p- pull off a more kind of human vibe to him. And there's some really, you know, fun scenes there. Uh, you know, he's like uh, teaching him things like, hasta la vista, baby, chill out, you know, things like that. And those are really fun scenes. Um and, you know, with Arnold, with this kind of different persona that he's uh, taken upon himself, I, I think that works really well in really convincingly playing this robot that is kind of learning to be a little bit more human, learning to be, you know, the, the sideways grinning uh, uh, action star that he is. So uh, we see a progression uh, in that character. That I think it's a very underrated performance from, from Arnold. Probably is his best performance, uh, I would say. Um, so there's, there's a lot of aspects to this movie that... Um, are really surprising, uh, up to and including the amazing special effects in this movie. I mean, come on. Uh, not just with the T-1000, but some of the, the, the stunts in this movie are just absolutely mind-blowing, uh, particularly in the end scene. Like a, a movie like this was such an undertaking when you really think about it. Um, because, I mean, today with CGI, you can pull off a lot of stuff. And again, I feel like a broken record. Like, you know, CGI can be used for good. Um, James Cameron himself proved that with, you know, Titanic and, and Avatar. Uh, but there's something about seeing these real live stunts performed on camera. Like, there's a scene where, you know, the, the, the SWAT van is being chased by the, the copter, the T-1000. And it's ducking under uh, bridges and it gets slammed into the back of, of, of the van. And and that's all real. That's a real stunt, a real helicopter, a real van. And that's really amazing. Um, 
and you know uh, what this movie does, you know, uh, with its its stunt work is really just wholly impressive and really like a, a general adrenaline fueling kind of action. Um, so I think it's it's you know just one of the most under uh, uh, impressive undertakings in terms of uh, an action spectacle that you, you, they can get. Um, and again, I think much like with the first movie, it's it's really helped by legitimate acting. I think Linda Hamilton is brilliant in her performance. Uh, again, I think Arnold Schwarzenegger really pulls off an underrated performance. And even uh, Edward Furlong, who, you know, kid actors aren't always the best, but I think he really does uh, pull off uh, a convincing performance as, as this character who's, you know, going through all these emotions. Like, you know, he, he, one, he's being pursued by a fucking horrible killer. Uh, two, he's kind of... Uh, opening his eyes to, you know, that everything his mother told him was real and, you know, struggling with, you know, the paradoxes of when am I going to meet my father da, 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 and, you know, learning to, to really become attached to the Terminator character. So there's a lot going on in, in the plot there. And uh, Robert Patrick is just terrifying <laughs> as, as, as the T-1000. I think he is one of the best villains um, in a movie because he really, you know, sells the, the cold, emotionless, uh, threatening aspects uh, that Arnold Schwarzenegger had in the first movie as a Terminator. But like times 10 here, he's just such a terrifying character, especially because uh, he is this chameleon-like character that can, you know, pull off any form. Uh, he can, you know, turn into... To, you know, uh, knives and, and things like that. Um, and he does it without really saying much. I think he says even less than what, uh, uh, Arnold says, says in the first movie. So there's a lot of challenge to that performance. And I think Robert Patrick, uh, absolutely pulls it off in spades. So, um, you know, full credit to, to Robert Patrick and his performance. And again, I think there is a very human core to this movie. Uh, while it does get a little bit preachy, I mean, there is, you know, something that you can kind of take from it. Well, you know, uh, it's in our nature to destroy ourselves as, as human beings, but this hu this machine is, is kind of learning the value of human life, so maybe we can too, as, as the movie teaches us. So I think that's all great, and I think it works really well. And, you know, this is just a hard movie to to review because I think it is you know among the greatest <laughs> achievements in, in movies. Really, I mean, really, when you think about it, one from a special effects standpoint, two from a story standpoint, um, and three just from uh, carrying on this story uh, from the original film, working as a sequel. And sequels are so hard to pull off. Really, um, when you think about it. Uh, very rarely uh, can a, uh, a sequel match, or even in this case, I think, top uh, the original film. So I think this does this in a great way. And there's just so many great action films. You know, when Arnold has that minigun and he's shooting all at, at all the cops and things like that, um, and the showdown in the uh, 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 steel mill, where one of the best scenes in this movie is when the Terminator... The T-800, Arnold, and the T-1000 are just brawling, you know? That's kind of like the, the the part that, you know, we've all kind of been waiting for for the whole movie. And it's just such a brutal fight. Meanwhile, it's just between two machines. Um, but it's so well choreographed. You know, he, like, takes the punch at the, the T-1000 right in his head, and then it blobs up and morphs, and it's, it turns that he's grabbing his hand, smacks him around. You know, he, he takes the, the whatever it is, and uh, he smacks it into his head and things like that it's just really brutal and because there is so much at stake in this movie I think that makes it even you know a, a better kind of brawl because this isn't just mindless action there is a real human core I think to the movie and that's what makes it work and I think that's what James Cameron understands in his movies that there has to be a human element to you know all the crazy effects that are going on uh, otherwise we're just you know watching a, a Transformers movie, basically. Um, so I think it, it, Terminator 2 is 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 a masterpiece. It, it really is. So I'd rate Terminator 2 four stars out of four. This is a rare occasion where the sequel really outdoes the original and complements it really well. And it's just one of the best action movies ever made. And I love it. What else can I say? Um, you know, 
such a memorable movie. Hasta la vista, baby. You know, uh, I think it's great. I love it. Uh, one of my favorites. Uh, what else can I really say? Terminator 2. It's it's among the best. It, it's uh, uh, well deserving of of its place in cinematic histories. It's one of the greatest action movies of all time. Uh, so <laughs> that's my review. I uh, hope you enjoyed watching. Comment, rate, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, Make sure to visit Derek237.com, and until next time, I'll see you later.